How do you think the biggest difference between institutional investment and the crowdfunding platforms? Yeah, I think it, it's interesting. I, I think that there's um, the differences in motivation. You know, for, for an institutional investor, for a VC, you are meeting that entrepreneur, you're doing that diligence, thinking about a return, an exit, an eventual outcome. You know, e even if you meet someone that has a, a product that you imagine might work, you as an investor still have to ask yourself, well, but to what degree will it work? What are the competitors? There's a lot of things that you're having to, to ask yourself. For, for a crowdfunding project, and this was quite intentional for us, there, there is no profit motive. There, there is no diligence being done from the perspective of, well, I make out well on this. There is the diligence of, does this person seem like they know what they're doing? Do they have a track record? Is there enough? Do they show enough to make me believe in them? It's a much lower bar. You know, most, most Kickstarter projects would be bad businesses and, and they don't aspire to be good businesses. You know, uh, someone who makes and self-publishes comic books, even if they're successful, that is a hard business to model on. Um, but what it does reveal is how much opportunity and how much meaning there is for creating projects that don't reach a 10x, 100x scale and don't even aspire to, but instead just engage the internet to a large degree and just like, hey, let's let's be the thing that people think is cool today. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's I, I think it's super interesting, and that one of the you know one of the benefits that's obvious now, but maybe we still take for granted, is just. The, the benefits of the public nature of crowdfunding and allowing the public to be a part of your story from early on and how much that speaks to the currency of the web and just what, what, it, what the fandom of the web is like, the kind of ownership people feel over projects and stars that they love and, and how that has evolved into subscription funding with Patreon, where you have a lot of people whose livelihoods are just being supported. They're being paid rent by their fans and even that, you even see that model coming to like pornography with OnlyFans, like a, this sort of like peer-to-peer -peer direct pornography site that is actually also using this model at this point. So there's something really interesting there. And comparing it to crowd lending is also interesting because a lot of those big crowd lending um, platforms, studies later found that a lot of the money coming into them was actually coming from those institutional banks. That by the time those got big enough, like, all the smart people with a lot of money were like, hey, there's a pretty good return here. Let's like ex maximize this and you know as much as we can to where actually like the peer to peerness of it was, you know, became less true as they grew bigger just because money was looking for, you know, just a way to make money. But these, but these smaller communities and artists owning a fan base of a thousand people and being paid ten thousand dollars a month to just do whatever they want. It is, you know, it definitely has, has ties to the, the old patronage systems, but that's a fundamentally different kind of relationship and a hard one for others to intermediate. Um, and so I, I think it marks, and we're seeing it happen with paid communities now too, which is a, a, another new space of the web where you're seeing people using money uh, to create different shared goals and using the architecture of the web to make that connection. I, I think that the, the direct individual and collective funding space is like still comically early and that, you know, by the time, you know, 30 years from now, like, I, I just think that this is just going to keep growing and, and that we still underestimate the potential of the space. You were mentioning uh, that uh, crowdfunding is probably at the beginning, or not at the beginning, but uh, still a lot of time ahead. What, what new trends, you, you mentioned them briefly, but what new trends do you see uh, arriving in the coming years? Maybe some have already come because of COVID. Uh, how, how, do you, uh, how do you see the, the next five, five to 10 years? Yeah, well, there's, there's going to, I mean, we're seeing it now with, say, musicians, the end of live music, right, has left this enormous gap in the music industry where, like, how is that meant to be closed? In the past, that was a fan buying a ticket, an experience, you know, there was a, a set theater that allowed for that transaction to happen. We're going to have to redefine those spaces, you know, and, and that, that is happening through COVID. It's all still a bit awkward. Um, but I think that that, that will be... Uh, one big thing. Usually the venture capitalist is looking for a return, so is looking to sell its uh, shares in, in your company. 
in a three to six, seven years uh, uh, horizon, which makes it a mid-term, short-term investor, not a very long-term uh, investor. So instead of uh, describing very, very, very theoretically uh, what a venture capital is, I thought that it was maybe more interesting for the audience and especially for founders to have a look at how we analyze deals. So how we look at startups who come to pitch their projects and how uh, we decide if we're going to finance them or if we are going to drop. Uh, to drop them. So I will show you some slides uh, about an in what we call an investment memo and it's on the basis of this kind of document that after a due diligence process we decide or not to invest. So I'm not sure that you can see, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, I think it's going too fast, okay. So um, first, uh, this is really a, a document that we use to make our decisions. So first of all, we will start to look at the business of the, of the company and we'll write a, a business summary and description of the, the deal uh, that is presented to us. So I took the example of a gaming company, a mobile gaming company. And so what is on this slide? It will be a business outlook. So the description of the business of the company. Uh, also, we'll add some major KPIs, so major figures about the revenues, the profit or the losses of the companies, the cash burn, uh, the growth perspectives, this kind of thing, so economic, economic uh, figures. Uh, we will also say how much money the company has raised so far with which investors, uh, where the business angels, where their friends and family, where they're already venture capitalists, etc. We'll look at how the deal was sourced and, uh, and uh, uh, the deal terms, so how much are we going to uh, invest if we invest, what share of capital we will obtain in, in exchange for this money. Also, we will look, and it's very important for us, at what will be the use of the proceeds. So what will the company do with the money we put in the, uh, in, in the company? Will they hire new people? Will they reinforce R&D expenses? Will they launch a new product? Will they open new countries? These kind of things. And also, we will try to um, look at the exit perspectives. So uh, will this company probably have an IPO, so become public, be listed on a market? Or is it a good candidate for an acquisition by a bigger player, this kind of, uh, uh, of things. Uh, then we look at the product. So for example, this was a, a game. We look at the product, we describe the product, and we see if there is a, a, a tech edge. Well, it's not really the case in a, game, uh, in, a, in a mobile game, but we try to identify if there are barriers to entry, if the product has something different, uh, if, the, if, if, it's product, if it's market fit, etc. So we'll try to really assess the quality of the, of the product and also its perspectives for further development. Um, then, um, okay, we look at also sometimes at the product roadmap. So that's the next game that was going to be developed, for example. Um, then we look at market and competition. So this is also a very important part. We try to assess how the company position, positions itself on a mapping uh, with strengths and weaknesses uh, compared to the, uh, to the uh, competitors. Um, then uh, we, again, we try to um, analyze the direct competition. We make uh, comparisons between uh, uh, KPIs and uh, uh, et cetera and, uh, and uh, uh, characteristics of the, of the companies. And sometimes this, in this case, we uh, analyzed a, a game that was in direct competition with the company's game. And then comes a very important part, is the business analysis. So that for that, we, it, it comes to the really financial uh, analysis of the, of the deal. And for that, we rely a lot on the business plan of the budget that are presented to us by the company. Uh, and then the important thing is really to challenge what the company says. So usually they present a business, uh, a business plan over the next five years, say for example, that is based on certain assumptions, assumptions in terms of uh, growth of sales, growth of revenues, etc. And sometimes we need to challenge these assumptions and to, 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 to try to benchmark uh, between a, a low case scenario, a base case scenario, and a best case scenario to see in which uh, revenue or profit uh, uh, past the company is, uh, uh, is positioned. So this part is really 
very important and requires some financial uh, analysis and modelization as well. Then uh, we will analyze uh, what we call the equity story. So we will look at the capitalization table. So who owns which part of the company, who, who owns which shares of the companies before we invest and then after we invest. So that will be the uh, current cap table and cap table after investment. So who are the investors who own the company basically? Are their interests aligned? Uh, are, are there some uh, people, some investors who have a too, too big a share and who might be a, a problem when, for example, we want to exit this kind of uh, issue? So the, the what we call the cap table, the capitalization table, who is sitting around the table uh, in the capital of the company is something very important to assess also the quality uh, of a deal. Um, okay, that's uh, also uh, we analyze sometimes when there are very big investors who have large uh, shares of the company, we will look at them and try to assess their interest in the company. Are they going to be uh, to want to sell very quickly, or, to, or on the contrary, uh, will they uh, want to keep their shares very long, etc.? So we try to identify the interests of these uh, of these uh, big investors. The World Knowledge Forum.